Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be starting our Moment Frame Design Series, uh, beginning with Part 1, which is going to be our member design, uh, then we'll be looking at Part 2, we're we'll looking at the connection designs, and then Part 3, we'll be looking at our foundation design. So let's go ahead and get started with Part 1, looking at the member design and our problem statement. So uh, for the member design, let's do a quick recap, right? We're going to be determining all of our uh, capacities in accordance with AISC 360, so we'll be using Chapter E for compression chapter F for flexure, chapter G for shear, and then chapter H for our combined uh, checks for compression and flexure. Uh, we'll be using the 15th edition. Um, the 15th and the 16th edition are, are pretty uh, similar in calculations, but we'll just go ahead and use the 15th for, for this example. And then just one thing to note that if you are um, in a seismic zone or, ha or have uh, you know special seismic uh, detailing requirements, you want to be sure to look at AISC 341, um, but we will not be using that for this example. So you can see there on the right, we have our frame. Um, we'll get into this in a second here, but we basically have a, a W18 by 76 beam with W14 by 68 columns, um, and that is going to be our moment frame that we are going to be using for this design series. So, like I said, we have a moment frame. It's 12 feet wide, excuse me, 12 feet high. It's 14 feet wide. It's W14 by 68 columns, and that's going to be A992 steel, and then W18 by 76 beam, also A992 steel, and we are going to be using pinned bases. And just, you know, depending on your connection or, or your system, you may have pinned or fixed bases, but for our purposes, we're going to be using a pinned base. So the loading is going to be uh, a dead load applied of of uh, 350 pounds per foot, a live load of 450 pounds per foot, and then we're going to have an applied seismic load there on the top left corner of the frame of 15 kips. And then we'll be using a LRFD loading and we'll just be designing in accordance or we'll be designing based on an envelope of all of the LRFD load combinations. And our results will come from an analysis model that we've already performed. So we can look at, take a look at our reactions here um, and we'll bring this up again as we get into the calculations. Um, but you can see our column, beam, and base reactions. Uh, one thing to note here is that the base reactions are in a nominal uh, state, right? So they have no load factors applied to them. Um, that's because we need to check both the concrete uh, strength, which will be an LRFD, and then also the soil uh, stability or the soil strength, which will be an ASD. So we'll take the nominal base reactions and apply those directly in CalcBook um, and use those to calculate both of the concrete and the soil checks. Whereas for the column and beam, those are the envelope uh, uh, critical um, stresses. So we have our maximum moments, our maximum shears, um, and our maximum axial loads uh, in each of the members. And we'll be just applying those directly without any additional load combinations in CalcBook. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So we'll go ahead and click into our AIC 15th edition. Um, and right, this is the part one series. So we're just gonna be looking at our member design. Uh, in the next series, we'll go ahead and do that moment connection. But for now, let's look into our steel member design. We're going to be doing axial, uh, major axis, flexural, and then also strong axis shear design. Click confirm. Uh, so for our load source, right, we're not going to be using a beam analysis because we'll be taking our uh, loads or our, our, our forces from our analysis model that we've already done. Um, we're going to uh, not use load combinations because we're taking the envelope forces from our model. Uh, we'll go ahead and select our member shape. So we'll do the uh, the uh, column first. So we have a wide flange column, um, and then we are going to be selecting a W14 by 68. So we'll go down to 14 by 68. Um, and then we can go and click into our axial design. So uh, we're going to be looking at compression because that will be the most critical case for the combined loading with compression plus flexural. Um, and our length is going to be the height, so that will be 12 feet. And that's also 12 feet in both directions. We will not be worried about uh, worrying about torsional or flexural torsional buckling. And then our demand, right? We are not using any load combinations. We're just taking the, the absolute maximum or the envelope maximum that we got from our analysis model, which is going to be 20.5 kips. All right, and that gets us our uh, our compression design, right? So we can go through um, the capacity calculation. We've done this in previous videos, right? But just as a reminder, we checked this, uh, the flange for slender elements. We check the web for slender elements, both are non-slender. And then we go into our E3 and E4 calculation of AISC uh, 360. And we check our limiting slenderness ratios, our elastic buckling stress, and then our controlling buckling stress, which is going to be the elastic buckling stress. Um, and then we, um, we take a look at the, the design compressive strength there. 
of uh, 700 kips. So plenty of capacity for Axial considering what we have here. So then we can go ahead and move over to our flexural design. Um, and the only thing we need to enter in here is the unbraced length. And again, we're just going to be using that height, which is just 12 feet. Um, we're not going to make any adjustments to the buckling uh, modification factor because that doesn't apply for this column. Um, and then we are going to go ahead and take a look. We can again, you know, like I said, we've done this before. Um, we'll go through each of the calculations here, check our slender elements for the flange, um, check it for the web, and then step through and check our uh, capacity for bending. Um, and that is controlled by lateral torsional buckling. Um, and we are going to go ahead and have a capacity of 405 kip feet. Um, we need to enter on our demand for this, right? And so our demand for the uh, column moment is um, going to be, let's see here, 97.4 kip feet. Okay, and that gives us about a 25% utilization, so 0.24 DC ratio. Um, and then we can go ahead and do the shear design. Um, and we don't have any web stiffeners or anything like that. So all we need to do here is enter in our uh, our demand, which for the column is 8.1 kips, right? And that's super low, right? No, no concern there. Uh, we don't need to step through the calculations here. We've done that in previous videos. And the last thing we want to look at is our combined loading. So we have all of our uh, our forces have been imported from the appropriate you know, calculation tabs, and we have a combined DCR ratio of 0 0.25. So we are good uh, with our column for combined loading as well as shear design. So uh, now that we've done the, the column loading, let's go ahead and um, start over. We can print this one or, or we can save it, but let's start over here and move to our beam. So we'll go ahead and click into the 15th here. We'll open up another steel design. Um, again, we'll be looking at axial, flexural, and shear. Again, we'll be looking at uh, user entered values for our load source, no load combinations. And then we'll select our shape, which is going to be a wide flange, and it's going to be a W18 uh, by 76. All right, and then we can click into our axial design. Our unbraced length for this one is going to be 14 feet, which is just the length of the beam. Um, right, we don't need to step through here, but we do have a slender element um, for this W18. It is slender for compression uh, in the web, and so we do have to utilize that chapter E7, which um, takes a look and determines if we need to have a reduced area. Um, in this case, we do not need to have a reduced area, so we can continue to use the same uh, area of that web and calculate our compressive strength based on that. So we need to enter in our demand for this, which is going to be 8.1 kips. Um, and then we can go ahead and go to our flexure design. Right, our unbraced length again is 14. Uh, we could adjust our, our LTB modification factor CB, but we're going to leave that as one, um, just as a little conservative check. Um, and then again, right, same steps. We go through and check our slender elements, um, and then we just calculate our flexural capacity in accordance with F2. And then we need to add our demand for this, which is going to be at 97.6 kip feet. Oops. 7.6 kip feet gives us a D over C of 0.18, so plenty of capacity there. Uh, for our shear, right, no uh, no web stiffeners, um, and then we have a design load here for shear of 19.6 uh, kips. And the last thing we can do here is take a look at our combined loading. Again, all of our values have been brought in from the calculation tabs. And this gives us a combined DC ratio of 0 0.18. So uh, we've checked the beam. We've checked the column. Um, we are good on both of those. We have plenty of capacity. Um, and so that is a member design uh, in, in our part one of our uh, moment frame series. So uh, stay tuned for the next uh, part of this series, which we'll take a look at the moment connections um, and utilizing CalcBook as well. Um, so that we'll see you then.